Alrighty. Gotta get the chain sharpened on the pole saw and get the shaft straightened back out because this thing got all the clamps spun on the shaft for some when I got it hung up in a tree on the last fence row and I thought I had them all straightened out and turns out I missed the one on the center shaft I thought it just and did it to the spun the handle today but that's no big deal But I thought I would take this opportunity to kind of talk about how things are going to go here for a while. I uh, got to go back to school Saturday. I could just wait till Sunday, but I want to get everything or get down there so I got Sunday to get everything situated and. If I gotta buy any books or anything, get that done. I won't go on there. So, probably not gonna be any videos next week, or at least during the week, but and then next weekend is Martin Luther King, all that bull crap, so I, uh, got a three-day weekend I got one more field I'm planning on cutting on that week or that weekend if the weather cooperates and the ground freezes up so I can get across it um, ooh, I like this song um, Dad went over while he was running errands the other day and talked to that sheet metal shop. I think it's got a little bit of a wow in it. But, yeah. but Dad went over and talked to the the sheet metal shop where we took the stuff for the gravity box, and the uh, owner's actually taking care of all that stuff personally. And he's got everything laid out on the computer. He just hasn't uh, run the material cost yet. But we're getting quotes on both stainless and regular steel. And actually, this is probably a good time to get that box done because the price of stainless is actually down. And he said we could probably get that box redone in stainless steel for just a little bit more than what it cost for regular sheet metal so depending on what his version of a little bit more than and what my version of a little bit more is it's probably going to get done in stainless since I'm going to haul fertilizer in it But you'll never know because it's going to get painted anyway. So it's not going to detract from how it looks. And it'll last forever that way. So <sighs> Oh, shoot. And then over break, I also got my seed taken care of. It's ordered and paid for. I'm going, I'm planting agrigold corn again this year. 
I got two hybrids now. One's de one's a def defensive to put on that shit ground I picked up. That uh, I took a video of chisel plowing in, and then I got. Or no, I got three hybrids coming this year because I got a couple bags of the same hybrid I planted last year. I got enough bags of that defensive hybrid to take care of that field over there. And then I uh, got another offensive hybrid to try. And then... I'm planting, last year I planted channel beans, but the guy I bought, bought my beans from last year decided to get out of selling seed, which I can't hardly blame him because seed is a very competitive business, and if you're a small guy, it's hard to get into, but I uh, got a buddy from school who works for uh, first choice seeds down in Indianapolis and they're basically just a uh, for at the moment they're mostly in Indiana but they're branching out so I'm planting first choice beans and I got uh, roundup ready ones for 35 bucks a bag so can't hardly beat that so last year I was paying last year I paid 50 bucks a bag for basically the same thing I, there's different hybrids in beans but for the most part a bean is a bean is a bean it, there's other than maturity group there's really I mean people can say what they want there's a little bit of difference in hybrids but not enough to really make too much of a difference management practices the biggest determination and how beans yield so but the nice thing about roundup ready ones is since the patent ran out on them technically if I really wanted to and I may or may not do it but technically, if you wanted to, you could hold beans back for replant since there's no patent on them anymore. And Monsanto's released the Roundup Ready 2 trait, which, if you get right down to it, there is no, there is almost no difference in Roundup Ready 1 and Roundup Ready 2. Basically, the only reason Monsanto released Roundup Ready 2 was to re-up their, their patent on the Roundup Ready trait. So, and everybody's probably going to be up in arms over that, oh, Monsanto, evil company, GMOs, cancer, all this bullshit. But... I'm not saying that Monsanto is the greatest company in the world, and I'm not saying that they're always on the up and up, and they're always right, but there's no denying what Monsanto has done for agriculture in terms of technology, so, I mean, I'm not going to knock them too hard for it. They keep making my life easier. They can really do whatever they want. And I'm sure there's people going to disagree with that. And I know there's a lot of liberals going to disagree with that. But that's my opinion. Such is life. If you don't like it, deal with it. So, 
I've already run through did all my fertilizer racks. I haven't bought any fertilizer yet, mainly because I don't got the money for it. Fertilizer I'm gonna have to take out a loan for. And depending on what the works or what the job situation is come spring. Plus, from near as I can tell, fertilizer prices are still dropping. And normally, in a normal year, they're, they'd continue dropping right up until spring and then they'd uh, steady off or go back up just a little bit. But they're continuing to drop and I'm one, I'm waiting to see where the bottom ends up and two i'm still trying to decide where i want to get my fertilizer from because um morley was i went with him the other day to look at a dump an international dump truck that he was thinking of putting or using for a grain truck and when he came over when he came to pick me up he brought me over the price sheet for helena which is basically right down across the railroad tracks from where I, where I haul grain into um and I'm, they were, normally I've been getting fertilizer from Co Alliance. And the biggest reason for that is because I don't got my own fertilizer spreader, I need a place to rent spreaders out. And as far as I know, the Helena down there, I know they have a couple pull type spreaders down there. What am I doing? They have a couple pull type spreaders down there, but I don't know if that's something they rent out or if they use those for custom applicating. And either way, I've only ever seen two of them. And normally during spring, they're not there because either Helena's out custom applicating or there's a waiting list a mile long for them. And farmers are using them. But our Co Alliance has like 15 or 20 full type spreaders and that was the biggest reason I always went to them was because I needed a spreader well when I now that I'm helping out Morley he uh, lets me borrow they got a big six ton Chandler which is what was in my fertilizer spreading video earlier this spring and I like that spreader a whole lot better because it's got uh, hydraulic engage on the feed web or on the yeah the feed web for the fertilizer and our Co Alliance uh, spreaders that I normally use are just either on or off there's a lever on the back you trip it to engage it and then once you once you engage it your the web chains run until you're done with the field and that's kind of a pain in the ass I mean it works but I like to be able to sh shut the web off while I'm turning on the end rows so But Helena, their fertilizer prices were knocking coal alliances right out of the water. So, by as much as like 50 bucks a ton on some things. So, I'm probably going to go down there.
and what else trying to keep track of what I'm doing here and not lose my train of thought on what I'm talking about uh, fertilizer seed um, depending on when we get the tin back for that gravity box is going to determine how soon I start making videos of that again. If I get the tin back, I'll be coming home on weekends to work on it. I shouldn't say if, I say when. I should say when we get the tin back. I'll be coming on weekends to work on that. I got a few fields I want to check for down trees. Because there's a couple fence lines. The video I took of finishing up corn, if any of you remember that one, those two fields, by all rights, should have the fence rows cut back. The problem is those two fields are on a uh, licensed uh, hunting preserve, which I have no problem with a hunting preserve because people are out there shooting what's eating my crops anyway, so more power to them but because of that I'm not even gonna bother asking him if I can clean them fence rows up so and really they aren't all that bad surprisingly because I think he does a pretty good job of taking her before I got the fields I think he did a pretty good job of keeping them not cut back but keeping them cleaned up so So I gotta get that done yet. Um, at some point, when the ground freezes up, so I can get over and rearrange the barn, I want to get that loader dug out, and I need to get the uh, running gear dug out that I'm gonna be putting that box on. But to do that, we need the stinking forklift, and we can't get the forklift in there because the ground's so stinking wet. Yeah, I need to get the barn shuffled around so that the combines can go back in their cubby hole. And the planter and the drill can come out where I can get to them. Because the planters needs, I need to uh, do some work to it. I had a axle break on me. Well, it didn't break. The, the way the axles are on that planter, they're basically just a piece of Schedule 80 pipe between two disc bearings and then there's uh, um, castle nuts on either side well apparently at some point one of those nuts got loose and the axle started spinning in the bearing and it effed the threads all up on one of the axles and we actually found a set of uh, NOS Oliver 540 planter axles at uh, a parts warehouse so all I got left to do is uh, I got to get it apart so we can figure out what bearings it has in it because they use two different st or two different styles of bearing but only one axle so got to get that done that's probably gonna be a spring break project if I had to guess Man, what else? Um, dum 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 dum. Um, 
<laughs> I think that pretty much hmm other than typical spring changing oil and tractors and stuff I think that's pretty much all the projects I got to get done yet this winter is that planter and that box and I take that, that running gear, I'll bring it home. I'm going to put four new tires on it because it's just got truck tires on it now. And I'll pull that apart and clean and repack the wheel bearings. And I doubt I'll get it painted before spring. but I'll at least get it brought up to snuff for field service. All right, you little prick. See, now that the stupid thing is cooled off, alright, well, I mean, the engine's not up to operating temperature, it runs fine, but if I ran that thing for 10 minutes and got the, got the block warm, it'll, it'll start running like shit. And you can tell, just sitting there, I mean, it, it'll sit, it sits there, it's, sit, it's idling fine right now. But after it warms up, it starts idling really slow, and you know how you listen to an engine long enough that you know what it's supposed to sound like at certain speeds? It just, when it warms up, it's, not only does it idle slower, but it sounds weird. And the throttle response turns to shit. And I know it ain't the air cleaner because I cleaned that the other day. It can't be the fuel because we've put two, I've put two different batches of fuel in it. And that didn't make a difference even though I thought it did the first time around. And the only thing that really made a difference the other day when I worked on it was there was shit on the spark plug. But, I mean, it looks like a typical two-cycle spark plug. And the piston's got a little bit of shit on it, but so, but it ain't overly gummed up, so it's not like the carb's out of adjustment. And I don't know how the carb would have got out of adjustment because all it did between the last time I used it and when it started running like shit was sit down in the barn. If I can. <laughs> Fish hitch.
Come here. Little prick. Um, if I can get. I know this thing's got to spin sideways to come out. There we go. Now this ought to come out the hole. This should be the fuel strainer. I mean, from what I can see, it looks like it's clean. Alright. That's got to come out of there somehow, because they put it in there. Somehow, that thing has to spin so that it comes out head first. And it's just got to be a matter. Got it. Yeah, I don't see anything. I don't know if I'm putting a big old glare on this camera or not. I mean, there's a couple little swimmers on there, but nothing that should restrict the fuel flow enough to make it run as bad as it does. So I doubt it's starving for fuel. So I guess that's going to be the next step is to run over to the steel dealer in the morning. So I had to run over and see if I could catch one of my landlords at home anyway. But I'll run over to the steel dealer and pick up a spark plug and pick up some sea foam. And go from there, I guess. Stick this just so shit doesn't get in there. Air filter's clean. Just being difficult must be a female chainsaw. So, but I guess, and I'm sure having that thing playing this whole time is gonna throw off one hell of a copyright issue with this one, but we'll see. I guess if you make it this far in the video, it didn't, well, it must not have been that bad, but. I guess that's just a little bit of a rundown of how things are going to go and a little snid bit of 
working on saws, so. I guess that does it for this one, and we will catch you guys on the next one.